The other day we made a very simple curtain rod for the back of one of my doors in the house. And at the time I showed you some little pinch clips that are used to hang a curtain like that that came from a place called rejuvenation.com. These look like the ideal solution for hanging the curtain on that do door. Unfortunately, when you squeeze the clips to insert the curtain, they don't bounce back all the way or they don't spring back all the way. And then the curtain isn't held as tightly as we had hoped it would be. And it tends to want to come loose on one or two of the clips on a regular basis. That's only been about a week and it's already a problem. So we're going to ditch those clips. Hopefully we can get our money back on those. And I guess I'm not recommending you go out and buy those clips if you were thinking about it. Instead, I'm going to make some oval rings and Janet will sew some ties to the top of the curtain and tie it to the rings. It'll be a little bit more simplistic, a little bit more rustic looking perhaps, but it'll still allow the curtain to be taken off of the rod very easily, free of the rings and any kind of clips so that it can be washed if it gets dirty. So today I thought I'd show you how to make some really simple rings. This isn't hard. You can make them any size, any shape you want. It's just a matter of having a simple mandrel. And in this case, because I want oval rings, I just doubled over a piece of round stock. My curtain rod was 3 8 diameter, so I went up one size material in what I have here to 7 16 diameter round bar, and that should slide just fine on the curtain rod. I drilled a hole to capture the bar that I'm going to use for the rings. This is about 3 16 diameter. This is some of that wire hoop that they use for political signs in an election year. I collect as much of this stuff as I can, last three or four years before I run out. So I've got plenty of that around and that's what I'll make my rings out of. I just stand this up in the vise and leave the hole available. And you don't have to use a hole. You can pinch it on the side of a solid mandrel without a hole with a pair of vise grips or tongs and then bend it around. The hole just makes it a little easier. Now this is another place where a torch comes in really handy. You just want to heat back from the bend. You don't want to get heat. Let me show you what happens if you heat too far out. If you heat real far out, you just end up with a bend where you don't want it. So if you heat right up next to the mandrel, and then wrap it, and as it starts to feel snug, heat a little bit more, and just keep doing this. This is way easier than trying to do this in the forge. If you did it in the forge, you wouldn't want to have this little tab that locks in because you'd have to get it free every time, and that would be really quite problematic, I think. I need to make eight of these for that curtain rod. Probably better off if I make a few extras. And we'll see if this rod's long enough to do that. Since my vise is close to the wall, I can't swing too long a piece of material around like this. If your vise is out in the middle of the room, you can use a longer piece of material.
Well, that's pretty much all there is to it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine or ten of them, it looks like. So now we need to let this cool. I don't want to grab that. It's a little hot. And those come out fairly even. The better you are with an even, consistent heat, the better it is. But a little squeeze in the vise like this helps even up the sides a little bit. Once this is cool, we'll go to the bench and we'll cut it off. Now you can just put that little tail in the vise here. and That gives me a nice place to work. And I think I'm going to use a little cutoff disc on a die grinder. You could use a hacksaw and run it down that if you wanted to. You could probably use an angle grinder with a cutoff disc. Whichever has the thinnest wheel, you don't want to remove too much material here. Make sure you wear your safety glasses and probably hearing protection. And because we used round rod here, we've got this nice little groove we can work down into to get this out of there. Get that tail off of there. Now everything else should just slide right off of this. Nearly slide right off is easier said than done, but may have to wait for these to cool just a little bit more so I can grab them with my hands. But I think you kind of get the idea here. I hope. Now on another note, you could make a little chain out of these just by linking them together and then closing them up. And if it's just a little ornamental chain, you probably don't even need to weld or solder or do anything else to the, the ends. But for the curtain rings, I want those to be in line. So that's just a matter of coming back to the vise and making a few little adjustments. That little eighth inch or less gap isn't going to hurt anything. I just do that to all of them. You can make as many rings, any shape you want, using the same technique. Then to put a little wax on them, I just throw them in a shovel, heat them up in the forge, drop them into a coffee can before they're completely cold. I'll throw a little hunk of Johnson's paste wax in there. Right now they're actually burning the uh, old Johnson's paste wax off the outside of the can. So I'll go stand somewhere else and let that smoke and stink for a while. Then we'll wax them and these rings are done. Like I say, you can make as many of these as you want doing this. You can make these in large quantities for chain, for other decorative purposes, other little hardware items, curtain rings, whatever you need a whole bunch of rings for. I've actually seen this same technique used for chain mail, even though I don't have the patience to make chain mail. But if you want to make thousands of little rings out of little tiny wire, cut them all apart and then link them all together, you, know, you could make chain mail this way. Well, I only needed eight rings, but I ended up with 10, so I've got a few that I can discard if some of them are a little bit lumpy, like this one looks pretty bad. 
But the rest of, rest of them look pretty uniform. So that's just a quick, simple way you can make something useful, whether it's for use in your own home as curtain rings or for some other project you're working on in the shop. That's a good way to make a bunch of rings. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Feel free to watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, but you know it. Make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.